There are many celebrities and famous people that you may know who have asthma. Some of them are David Beckham, the professional footballer, Harry Styles, the singer, Jessica Alba, the American actress, Donald Bennett and Jerome Bettis, the professional American football players, and rappers Eminem, DMX, and Coolio. Celebrities inspire us in many different ways, and knowing that they are also living with asthma and not letting it become an obstacle is even more inspiring. You can do the same. Before I talk about asthma, let's talk about how our airway or respiratory system is made up. Following is the analogy that I use with my patients. So imagine a big tree with its trunk, big branches, which then split into smaller branches, and you get leaves at the tips of these smaller branches. Now that you have a clear picture of this tree in mind, flip it upside down and this essentially is your respiratory system. And I'll explain how. Your windpipe, also known as your trachea, is the tree trunk, which travels down from your mouth and separates into medium-sized branches called your bronchi. These then split into further smaller branches within your lungs called bronchioles. At the ends of these branches, you have leaves, which are essentially your alveoli. This is where your body absorbs the oxygen from the air you've just breathed in and gets rid of the carbon dioxide in the air you breathe out. Interestingly enough, actual tree leaves do the opposite through a process called photosynthesis. Now, asthma occurs when there is inflammation within these airways, which may be triggered by different things in different people. The inflammation causes the muscles around the airways to squeeze, and this causes the airways to become narrow, and then this makes it more difficult for the air to get in and out of the lungs. As a result, this leads to wheezing and breathlessness. The inflammation also causes the lining of the airways to make more mucus than normal, which causes cough and further obstruction or blockage to the airflow. Asthma can start at any age, but it most commonly starts in childhood and usually runs in families. However, this is not always the case. At least 1 in 10 children and 1 in 20 adults have asthma. Unfortunately, there is no once and for all cure. However, about half of the children who develop asthma eventually grow out of it by the time they are adults. The symptoms most commonly associated with asthma are cough, wheeze, breathlessness, and you may develop a feeling of chest tightness. It may feel like you're breathing through a straw, and these symptoms can be worse at nighttime. Your asthma is classified into mild to severe depending on the symptoms and how frequently they occur. Some people are worse in winter months and some are worse in hay fever season. Your doctor or asthma nurse will be able to assess how severe your asthma is and advise the appropriate treatment and make an individualized asthma action plan. Asthma symptoms can flare up time to time and it's usually due to a trigger, however not always. If you have a trigger, then obviously try and avoid it if possible. There are quite a few things that may trigger asthma, and these can include common colds and chest infections, hay fever season or moldy environments. Exercise can also sometimes trigger asthma. If needed, you can use an inhaler before exercise to prevent symptoms from developing. Certain medications, for example aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory painkillers such as ibuprofen or nurofen, and also beta blockers. Smoking and cigarette fumes can also trigger asthma. This one's quite obvious, as we know, smoking is bad for your lungs. Even smoke on clothes, hair, etc. can make asthma worse. Other fumes, for example aerosol deodorants, paints, solvents and even pollution can trigger asthma. Certain pillows and mattresses, especially the ones that include feathers. Sometimes even animals, for example your pet cat or dog, can trigger asthma. So how is asthma diagnosed? Well, there are two commonly used tests and they're called spirometry and also assessment with a peak flow meter. Spirometry is a test which measures how much air you can blow out into a machine called a spirometer. This gives multiple readings that can be interpreted by your doctor and used to determine if you have asthma. The alternative test is a peak flow meter. A peak flow meter is a small device that you blow into. It is a bedside test that can be done at home once shown how. If your airways are narrowed due to asthma, your peak flow readings will be lower than expected. If your readings improve after using treatments such as inhalers, then you may be diagnosed as having asthma. Another less commonly used test is the pheno test, which stands for fractional exhaled nitrous oxide. This measures the level of nitric oxide in the breath. Increased levels are thought to be related to asthma. 
So how do you treat asthma? Well, in most people with asthma, the symptoms can be prevented most of the time by treatment which comes in the form of inhalers. Inhalers deliver a small dose of medicine directly to the airways which help relieve the symptoms of asthma. Inhalers can be grouped into relievers and preventers. A reliever inhaler is taken as required to ease symptoms. The medicine in reliever inhalers is termed bronchodilator. If you remember, we talked about their respiratory system in the beginning of this video and mentioned the branches called bronchi and bronchioles. Well, this bronchodilator medication widens or dilates these airways as per the name bronchodilator suggests. This medication takes effect quickly, however, only lasts in your system for a short period and you may need to use it again if your symptoms come back. If you only have symptoms every now and then, the occasional use of a reliever inhaler may be all that you need. However, if you need to use a reliever inhaler three times or more within a week, then a preventer inhaler is usually advised. The second type of inhaler is a preventer inhaler. This is taken every day to prevent symptoms from developing. The medicine commonly used in preventer inhalers is a steroid. Steroids work by reducing the inflammation in the airways. When the inflammation has gone, the airways are much less likely to become narrow and cause symptoms. Sometimes, your preventer inhaler may contain a steroid as well as a long-acting bronchodilator if the steroid on its own is not enough. The long-acting bronchodilator is a similar medication to the one used in the reliever inhaler. However, this one lasts for up to 12 hours in your system and hence provides you relief up to 12 hours. When treatment is optimized, you will notice that your symptoms have improved and you may only need to use the reliever inhaler very infrequently. Sometimes it may be difficult to use an inhaler, especially in children, so spacer devices can be used. A spacer is like a small plastic tube that attaches to the inhaler and your doctor or nurse will show you how to use this. Now for most people, inhalers work well and tablets are not required. However, in some cases, tablets, which come in liquid form for children, are prescribed in addition to inhalers. For example, Montelukast and steroid tablets. A short course of steroid tablets, for example prednisolone, is sometimes needed if the symptoms are prolonged or during a severe asthma attack. Finally, there are also some other important points to know. It is vital that you learn how to use your inhalers correctly. In some people, symptoms persist simply because they do not know how to use their inhaler properly and the medicine from the inhalers does not get into the airway system properly. So ask your practice nurse or doctor if you are not sure if you are using your inhaler properly. Alternatively, you can watch a video on YouTube for a demonstration on how an inhaler should be used. If you notice that your asthma symptoms are not fully controlled or if they are getting worse, then please see your doctor or asthma nurse. For example, if a nighttime cough or wheeze is troublesome, if sport or exercise is being affected by symptoms, or you need to use a reliever inhaler more often than usual. A simple adjustment in inhaler timings or doses may control these symptoms. Lastly, if you develop severe symptoms that are not eased by a reliever inhaler or if you are having difficulty talking due to shortness of breath, then you need to see a doctor urgently. You may need emergency treatment in hospital. A severe asthma attack can be life-threatening. In my next video, I will tell you the story of a patient who nearly died because of asthma. So guys, that was pretty much everything you needed to know about asthma. If you have enjoyed the content and found it knowledgeable, then please consider subscribing to this channel so I can have your support and know that you are benefiting from the videos. Also like the video and share it with your family and friends so that they are able to benefit from this useful knowledge. You may help save a life by passing on this information. If you have any suggestions for future videos, then please leave a comment below. All the best guys, look after yourselves, stay healthy and remember, knowledge saves lives.